Alright guys, are you ready for the finale of Stasis? At least I think it will be the finale. I think we're nearing the end. Um, John Maracek must be ready. Um, because he needs to save his daughter. We retrieved the power cells and now we need to put them into the machine in here. And last time I didn't read those PDAs because I was tired of, uh, of reading. But I got a request to read them anyway and when I think of it I should do it because I've read them all and these are maybe the most important ones because one is from Dr. Milan and the other from I think it was Blackman and I'll read that one first no it's not Blackman it's Robert Lincoln uh, there so there we go July 23 I've been reassigned to investigate the disappearance and murder of two scientists in the employ of Dr. Milan. A strange matter, to be sure. I've been observing the movements of some of these eggheads, and I can't say I'm too impressed. Doesn't anybody around here record their comings or goings? Or make any notes? There is no traditional organization in this department whatsoever. Project Seed answers to nobody, this I know. But I thought these scientific types always made notes. Not that I care about admin, but I very much care about finding out who's selling weapons grade secrets. Industrial secrets are a matter of life and death, especially death in this case. My investigation will be thorough and no stone will be left unturned. The staff here are strange and in fact I'd say lots of them are even crazy. But I couldn't care less about that. I just want names and answers. And he was a medic. Considering the Red Cross on his PDA. August, I got this job because I get things done, not because of my warm and caring personality. At the moment, people are taking umbrage to my investigation, but security is a constant and essential part of shipboard life, especially when we're talking about industrial espionage. I'm not sure where the two missing scientists are, but it seems, based on the modified records I found, that they were killed and injected into space. And the other man would assume that these two were the criminals, but I don't buy that. As far as suspects go, I've ruled out Charlotte Williams and Marvin DeSantos. Charlotte, because she doesn't know where she is half of the time, and DeSantos because he's just smirking shit for brains. I'm confident that he's involved in drug dealing, and I will give him this. He's cautious, and acts like he's a real ladies man. But I know the truth, I've seen him rejected repeatedly at the bar. September since July, I've had to operate under the pretense that I'm an assistant. It's lucky that I'm that in my career I had some emergency room experience. The only other person who knows about my true purpose here is Dr. Milan. He has been encouraging. He constantly supplies me with information that I require for my investigation and at times is a little over helpful. Still, he seems honest enough. For the record, I am well aware of the kind of man Dr. Milan is. I have seen his experiments with my own eyes. I have seen what happens when the bodies are disposed of and the burning fires of the furnaces. But he does what's required to justify the means. There are few men in this world who will do what has to be done. For that I admire him. He told me to watch over Dr. Williams' experiments. It seems they're unofficial and although I prepared a report to Kane to have her removed from her position, Dr. Milan immediately overrode my request. I respect him, but to be honest I don't like having my authority overruled. So he kinda likes Dr. Milan, but then he has got some kind of ego. On November 12, Beckman, of all people, was sniffing around today. It seems the old psychopath suddenly became curious. I asked Dr. Milan for further instructions, and he told me to incapacitate the old man. This I did. A shame I had to break the old guy's kneecaps. Honestly, I was hoping to slit his throat, but Dr. Milan insisted that he remain alive. Alive and in pain, but unable to move. Huh. So you're as sick as Dr. Milan is. I'm revising my earlier opinion of that De Santos character's character. I still think he's pathetic little shit, but I know, but and I believe he was partly responsible for some of the stolen information. He strikes me as an amateur put up to it, up to this by an outside agent. I'll deal with De Santos soon, but first I've got to monitor his movements. Make one move, pal, and I'll have you. December 12, 17, that's the last one. Dr. Milan has earmarked me for one of his ex experiments. Okay, I know this because when I attempted to leave the ship to report to Kane Corps, I discovered that my access was restricted and blocked. I came back to my quarters and found Milan waiting here. 
He was waiting with two of those hellish critters that he's created. I'm not squeamish, but those things make me nauseous. I'm currently awaiting what he calls processing. I suppose at this stage I should make peace with God. I've killed many men in my life, and I'll never say that I feel remorse for it. And I won't give it and I won't give Dr. Milan the satisfaction of hearing me pray for mercy. My last notes on this affair are that Dr. Milan himself is at the heart of the events on board the ship. I was blind to it. I refused to believe that he was capable of creating such devastation. I always thought that scientists like control, but Milan breaks all the rules as far as science is concerned. The leaked information, the fungal growth, the missing scientists. I'm beginning to suspect he even knew that the Santos was actually selling intelligence, and may have fed him the information to sell. To what end, I don't know. I suspect it was because the Santos kept Beckman drugged to the eyeballs with whatever powerful stimulants he happened to have, so Beckman could continue his work. I can hear the machines being turned on. I welcome my fate. At least I know that I did my job for Kane Corporation. And he died as well. Only Dr. Milan, I think, is the only one that uh, is still alive who uh, actually wrote something in his PDA. <laughs> and I strike it kind of odd that everyone is keeping a diary like that. Maybe th those were instructions from Dr. Milan. Report everything you experience. And there the man is himself. Let's hope they're not too long. January 1, the new year begins. The wheel turns and the groom lane continues to lead the vanguard of scientific discovery for all of humankind. Yet I feel dissatisfied. Even as the peons who work under me celebrate the new year, I wonder why. Why would you celebrate such an asinine concept as an outdated Gregorian calendar on a ship that's currently swimming through the depths of space? The reason is clear. Comfort. They fear the unknown, the alien, the impossible. I do not. I embrace the unforgiving cosmos with open arms. The problem with the research we do is the humans doing it, constrained as they are by conscience, remorse and sometimes even fear. We try to grasp the infinite and give it a framework that it'll fits its cosmic splendor. Holy crap, this one is long. This is my tenth year as special project director for Kane Corporation. Despite my discoveries and quest for knowledge, I'm held back at every turn by paperwork, moralizing scientists, and that group of degenerate toadies that I sit on the board with. If I were rid of them, then my word would be God, my word. Not the word of a corporation. Still, they have their uses. The research is funded by Kane, and the Groom Lake is kept running by the money and personnel they provide. But the time will come when it all changes. You mark my words. Well, I think he kept his word. March, I'm inundated, inundated, what is that word, with emails from all departments about inconsistencies with storage and contaminated samples. This grand masquerade is sometimes more tedious than it's actually worth. Worst of all was Dr. Wei and that technician, Miss Callister, is it? I normally make short work of such troublemakers, but it hardly seems worthwhile. Troublemakers must be allowed to make trouble, because if they disappear, that legitimizes their claims and somebody will awake will always take up the fallen crusader's torch. That's a good point, Dr. Milan. Uh, Dr. Beckman's tendencies are becoming harder to restrain. I'm well aware of his shortcomings. The old man is as brilliant as he is deranged, yet manages to go about his work with a sociopathic glee. He's useful to have around. He has requested more bodies for seed, specifically more women who were recently pregnant. That is problematic, as we have very few such women on board and imp imports are not easy to come by. We may have to play this one under the radar. And then it jumps to May. That fool, Dr. Gray, complained yet again about his beloved insects becoming more aggressive as a result of the power outages. So what? Let him spill out onto the decks as far as I'm concerned. The importance of seed outranks hydroponics project work by a thousand to one. I do like playing chess with Dr. Gray, of course. I win every time, a little fact he's unlikely to tell anyone. Although he does seem quite happy to contact anyone who's interested with the opinion that he'd be the next best candidate for my job. Sebastian, you would not, could not handle what I do. If you believe otherwise, then you're as great a fool as I imagine you to be. When the day that I foresee comes, your rotting corpse will be under my feet and I will laugh. And then he got his way again. Alright, July, so there are two months interval. Dr. Williams is still under the delusion that I don't know about her personal research. Officially, it's illegal for staff to conduct their own research, but this is interesting. 
Recreating her dead lover in the form of a hybrid? How fascinating. If it works, I'll make use of it. If it doesn't, then I'll kill... Then it'll burn with the rest of the rejects. The woman is obsessed and I know that the Santos is playing no small part in feeding her delusions. I know her secret research won't cause me any problems or I would never have allowed her on Project Seed. So he's full aware of what's happening on the ship. What are those thingies over here? Can, it, can I use them? No. They're just for decoration. October 23, so it seems contaminated waste from the corpse disposal overspill is contaminating the ship. It's causing fungal growth, or so my various drones tell me. The fungus is a riveting proposition though. While I'm angry at Dr. Beckman for terminating more subjects than strictly necessary, these unintended side effects are fascinating. I intimidated as much to Dr. Gray and of course stroked his ego with hints and promotion and glory. He'll keep the fungus alive. The engineers want it destroyed, but I'm sure we can delay that. This experiment is becoming more engaging by the day, and I haven't even had to lift a finger. So while they clog up my inbox with demands and Rome burns, I plan to play the violin. We're more than secure here anyway, and this has a certain inevitabi inevitability about it. I must record the daily developments as the experiment grows. November 30. It is, as I foresaw, panic, destruction and mayhem, and yet Seed continues space. S-space. Once the fervor and the flame dies down, we'll sweep the decks of detritus, detritus and repurpose all of it for my beautiful hybrid creations. No more growing plants for the good of mankind. God is no longer in the machine, my friends. I am God. And this is where... So interesting, Milan thinks he's God. Um, and when someone thinks that... I don't think they're up for reasoning anymore. December 25, my beautiful children have excelled themselves. They kill, they learn, they adapt. A primal species without any of the trappings of morality. It's their time now. They almost came to be once, many years ago, but were snuffed out by humanity, afraid of his natural successors. This systematic extermination was given a name, the Eugenics Wars. The public knew it as corporate warfare. In truth, it was a coordinated genocide. Humanity wasn't ready for Professor Garun's astounding discovery and sought to destroy it. His work was not perfect, of course. That's where I came in. I spent most of my life as part of Kane, trying to access Professor Garun's original work. Old man Kane pushed me to the top because we shared an ideal. The utilization of science for the perfection of humanity. Where we deferred were the methods by which this was to be achieved. Not that had he not that he had much more to say after I held that pillow to his face as he lay in his hospital bed, all for a higher purpose. <laughs> okay. And I thought my game crashed for a minute over there, but it picked up again. Creation of our species from raw subject will become impossible now that the crew are dead, dying or aren't clean. But that's hardly an issue. Any subjects who are flawed or imperfect have been turned into the fertilizer that will nurture the perfection of the surviving race. Now the challenge is moving the Groom Lake out of range of any other ships. No one can be allowed to escape the ship alive. Any good strong survivors will become members of the new race. I am their creator. I control. I transcend. The last one, February 2, that's recently. I think. The Santos, I'm so very disappointed in you. A distress signal? I thought we were of one mind here in Seed. I'll castrate and destroy you for this betrayal. Your flawed body is hardly worthy of becoming one of my children, but for now I must turn off this accursed signal. You cannot hide from me, Marvin, you drug pedaling little fuck. So Marvin is still alive? Is the Santos still alive? Is that it? Okay, now let's uh, start up this thing. Let's put in the power cells. Alright, that's one. Now for the second one. What will happen though? I don't know. Or is he the Santos? Is that... I'm not sure. Last one. Okay, so now what? Use a surgical laser maybe? 
Uh, why would you do that? And what's with the lag? I've never had lag in this game. Um. Okay, so you splice this thing open for what? Now there is a viscerated creature. The smell of freshly spilled blood and guts fills the air. The creature has been cut raggedly in half. Why did why did he do that, John? What? Whoa. What the hell? I guess we need to turn it towards the glass wall. There we go. So on to the next room. And again, what's with the lag? I have to look into that. Warning. The environmental control and life support system has been compromised. Please report to the visitor center for...